is, and, and for quite some time I've been struggling with this and I've just probably become more open about it, is I don't like strategy. I am not a big fan of the idea of strategy in the sense of, of, of a lot of the terminology that is used within the business world. So I don't know if you know this, but I'm a strategy professor. I teach strategy. I've taught undergraduate strategy. I do research in it. I do um, teach doctoral level strategy, MBAs, you know, all levels at this moment. And um, I have grown to just not like strategy. And here's why. It teaches you to be strategic and transactional. And it uses, and I hate to sort of bring this up, but there's a strong economics um, background within it that has, um, I think, perversed a large part of strategy. And it's very much based on economic transactions being very, very transactional. And I've grown as a person, I've realized why I don't like it is because in my real normal life, I don't like that stuff. I don't like the transactional stuff. I don't feel comfortable when somebody is being transactional and just doing an exchange and talking about things in that sort of sense. I have grown to realize I am much more of a therapist um, much more of a family person, much more of a um, let's let's be all in in this together kind of person, much more of a um, you know I think people should try to love each other. I think like all of these things. If I say that right, like if I say we should encourage people to love each other and that should be the only strategy that, that exists. When I say that, it seems stupid, right? Like everybody is like, wait a minute, this is really dumb. Um, but, you know, I've grown to realize why I don't like that stuff is because it makes me feel dirty. It makes me feel corrupt. It makes me feel like that image in my mind of the used car salesman, no offense to used car salesman, um, but that sort of like sleaziness to it all. Um, and in my experience, any relationship that I've ever had that has felt like that has been a poor relationship and has been a, a broken relationship that is irreversible and you can't repair it. Now, the relationships that don't feel like strategy, the relationships where I'm like, I actually can trust you. I like I like hanging out with you. I like being around you. Um, I feel comfortable with you. Uh, those things are all, you know, often for me, it's my family um, at this moment. But, you know, it's been friends that have been close to where I can have a conversation with them, talk to them, um, you know, rely on them. I have this one friend that... Um, you know, he was my best man at my wedding. And I still remember this to, to like, it sticks with me so much. Um, he, so my dad was dying. I was 25 years old. I had my father, I had this really bad circumstance. I just started my PhD program. And um, both of my dads had cancer. They worked at a pulp and paper mill. And of course, you know, you get cancer when you do that industrial stuff. Um, so both of them had cancer at the same time, two different kinds of cancer, um, you know, blood cancers, but two different kinds. And my father-in-law was in the hospital. He was dying. And then um, my dad comes down for a, he just, a, you know, he was doing a, a routine um, sort of check and we lived really far away, you know, two days to get to the hospital like really far away. Um, and, and I was in the big city at that time. And so he comes down, visited us, and on his way back, he gets um, uh, an infection. 
And this was in Sudbury where he had to stop. And when he stopped, um, you know, he went in the hospital. This is where he eventually died a year, a, a week later. Um, but my friend, um, my best man, dropped everything and took me up to Sudbury and spent a few days with me while my dad was dying. Nothing about that transaction, nothing about that exchange felt like a transaction. Nothing about it was was economically rational for, for him. Um, nothing about that was that related to, um, you know, all of the things that one would sort of talk about in in a strategy class, nothing about that. But who is the one person that I would trust forever in my life? Forever. Well, I would trust, if I asked him to do something um, that I would respect in, in all sense of the word, word um, you know, who's the one person that, that I would call upon um, you know, if there's opportunities, whatever, all of that kind of stuff that, um, you know, everything that you think about that, that there would be an opportunity or what I would try to benefit or whatever, who's that one person, it would always be that guy. Um, it would always be my, you know, my best man that, that he, and there was nothing about that, that relationship nothing about it was economically viable for him. In fact, it, was, it, it took away from, he was in grad, he was doing his law school at, the, at that time. Um, and it took away from, you know, the studies and took away from his own family who his dad eventually died, you know, I think it was like five years later. So he wasn't doing that well either. Um, you know, like everything about that was selfless. Everything about that was somebody doing something because of, you know, because of love, because of he was compassionate for somebody else. Now, this guy um, who's, you know, gone on and uh, he was my roommate in, in university, he's gone on and He's probably one of the most successful business people in all of Canada at this moment. Um, and I'm not lying with that. Like, he's an extremely successful corporate lawyer and, um, you know, doing all sorts of things. And I strongly believe the reason why is because he does things like that, because he is such a good human being. Um, that, that it's just hard to believe, right? Like you just don't meet people like that. And I always think about that. I always think about, okay, why is it that I feel so attached to that? And it's because, and attached to, to him, it's because of those little tiny things that he's done, um, and why is it that he has grown to become so successful? Yes, he's sort of goal oriented and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but man, there's nothing that I would do and give for for him uh, because of everything that that he did, and um, that always stuck with me. And I think nothing about that is strategic. Nothing you would ever read in a strategy book. Nothing would tell you that this is the way that you should you should act in the business world. But I will forever say if somebody if there was somebody that said, hey, do you know of somebody, a, a, a good lawyer or, you know, a good um, attorney or somebody, I would absolutely refer him every single time for the rest of my life. Um, and I think that's actually what we're looking for. And that's why strategy in my view, has been corrupted. Um, strategy is really about, let's try to, in my view, build more relationships like that, finding people that are like that, um, 
training people to not view business as an economic transaction, but view it as as a gift, um, view it as somebody is, is trying to help you, um, view it as let's 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 think about this in a different way and be part of your team um and that's such a different view of strategy and it's so different from how it's taught um and and you know the conversations that you would have and the type of students that will come through and and i think it's so peculiar to view it in that sort of way that I'm an outlier, um, that I view myself again, I view myself as, as more of a therapist. Um, and I teach therapy and I don't teach strategy. Right. And so even though I'm teaching a strategy course, very much teaching therapy, um, and teaching, you know, what it is to mean to be a good person in this world. And that's far different than any strategic course that you would ever take. All right, take care and have a wonderful day.